Hi, this is Tony from Silverstone Technology, and today I'd like to show you our new products for the second half of 2020. So this video will show you what we have in store for the rest of the year, and also to my right and my left, I'll be showing you where we think our products belong. So to my right over here, we have a living room setup that sort of mimics what you like uh, to put in your PC in your home settings inside your living room. So recent announcement of Xbox and PlayStation 5, I think a lot of people are very interested in putting or buying their own gaming console for their living room. But I think with your help, we can educate more customers to actually build their own gaming PC that can rival or maybe even better those game, upcoming gaming console for their living room. So here we have some classic Fortress, Raven, and the popular Sugo series from Silverstone that I think will fit perfectly in those environments. We also have storage cases, such as those over there for NAS storage, and also for our Temjin series case, now called the CS330 with this hot swap of dry bay that's plenty enough for your storage and your gaming needs. So over on my left side, I'd like to also show you what our upcoming Alta F1 case will look like in a typical gaming setup environment. So over here I have this beautiful all aluminum exterior case with a signature 90 degree rotated motherboard layout that I will show you later in the video in detail. So let's move over to our meeting room to see everything. Okay, welcome to our meeting rooms. Here we have set up a few of our cases over the, uh, that has been released over the years, including some of the very popular ones, such as our Mini ITX SG13, the Raven, you know, the Fortress, and also the Micro ATX cases that we have behind us, such as the LD03, LD01, RL08, and also FT03. Okay, so what we, have been doing really well in small phone factor spaces is the ability to pack in full-size components and full-size graphics card into a very small phone factors. So we helped to pioneer some of the really iconic examples that you see today. And for ATX cases, last year we've introduced three new case series names to help people recognize a different level of our cases such as FARA cases over here that represent our entry level line of tower cases, the SETA A1 here, or the SETA series that represent our middle to high end range of cases. And finally, the Alta case, which I have one here, it's the Alta F1 that combines, that seeks to combine the best of what we have created before from the iconic cases such as the TJ11, TJ07, and the Fortress series. So without further ado, let's get into the detail of the new Alta F1 on the other side of this meeting room. Okay, so here I have two Alta F1 cases, one in black and one in silver. So in the beginning, we'll have actually two versions of this same case, one with the standard version with two tempered glass side panels and one that is the quiet version of the Alta F1. So let me quickly show you how I can remove the top cover. It's very easy. It has a magnetic top cover on top. So I have to just lift that up to remove it. And then we have the side panel. I have to do is press on this button here to release the side panel where I can just pull this up. And here you see the quiet version of the case is built with two steel side panels. And both side panels will have sound dampening uh, material applied to the entire panel on the back side. So if we were to actually hold this in person, it's really, really heavy for the thickness that you know, it has. The same material will be applied to also the front, front side of the case and also the bottom side of the case where the air intakes. Okay? So 
you can see already the Alta F1 has our signature rotated 90 degree motherboard layout, which we've been using for some of our most famous cases from the Raven or Fortress series from before. So why do we bring it back again for the Alta F1? Well, that's because uh, in terms of airflow efficiency, uh, it is really, really superior against uh, the traditional layout cases. So air intakes on the bottom, it rises, hot air rises naturally. So the airflow can help push, the fan can actually help airflow push up and out of the case in a really efficient fashion out to the top of the case. So another benefit of this rotated 90 degree layout is the ability to save space compared to traditional uh, cases of the same type. So if you try to connect the cables on top, you'll notice that in this case, there are no cable connection needed for the back of the case. So that means you can actually push the Alta F1 against the wall or into a corner to help you save even more desktop or floor space. And lastly, for graphics card, this is the most, probably one of the most important components you'll put inside your case. And the rotated 90 degree layout really helps to improve the overall installation and the usage of uh, graphics card inside the case. So number one, of course, is the cooling efficiency. Like we mentioned before, the graphics card will be sit situated vertically where the airflow flows over them naturally for better cooling than traditional cases. Number two, it's actually better for less dust collection on, on the card. So because the cards are um, situated in a vertical fashion, there's less dust settlements that will get collected on top or on the back side of the gra graphics card. And thirdly, if you have multi-GPU setup, you don't have the problem whether in the traditional cases with the bottom card will heat up the top card, making it really worse for the card on top. So that doesn't happen in a vertical case either. And lastly, because the car's weight is supported completely by the chassis structure, it is much safer to use. So you won't get uh, motherboard slots uh, getting having to contain with all the weight of the modern graphics car, and there's no sagging over time as well. Okay, so those are the benefits of the rotated layout compared to the traditional layout cases. And we've already finished thermal testing this case. So for the Alta F1, we'll include three 140 millimeter air penetrator fans. So we'll go ahead and roll a video to sort of show you what that may look like inside a chassis situation. So compared to normal cases, air penetrator fans focus its airflow much better than before. And with a couple of these inside the case, it really helps drive the hot air out of the case. And the case is also compatible with up to 180 millimeter fan, as well as down to 120 millimeter fan. So we have air penetrator fans available for sale separately to help you change your setup if you like. Also, another thing that we improve on the Alta F1 compared to our older uh, Raven or Fortress cases with this rotated 90 degree layout is the ability to accommodate even more liquid cooling options than before. So this is something that was quite a bit lacking uh, before. So this is vastly improved for this model. So first of all, the bottom chamber here can accept up to 360 millimeter radiator and the top here, there's additional fan mounts. You can also mount up to three 140 millimeter fans up here above the top IO or another 360 millimeter radiator. So making this uh, one of the first such layout case, cases with dual radiator support, okay? So that's the Alta F1 and I hope you really like this, okay? This will be launched launching in Q4 of this year. So hopefully you guys like what you see. So moving on, let's go over to another case called the Zeta Q1 and Zeta H1. So right now I have this case configured as Zeta Q1. Okay, so Q stands for quietness. All right, so if I take out the side panel, it again has that really dense, high quality sound dampening material applied to the side panel as well as to the interior of the case. On the top, 
Here you can also see we have sound dampening material that will help to cover out the noise. But if you need additional cooling, you can also re remove this uh, panel or actually the sound dampening material to make it breathe a little bit better if you like. Okay. So what makes this case even better than traditional or maybe some of the other silent cases I may have seen in the market is that we've really re-engineered this front panel to be the best sound absorbing front panel that you'll see in a case. Okay, so if I lay this down, you'll see that there's a dust filter here. It's toolless, I can just open this up to review a very deep chamber that's also covered in sound dampening foam. Okay, so the inside is inspired, the design of this is actually inspired by the acoustic um, glass window frame that they also need to let air flow in while keeping the noise down, okay? So if you, have, if you look at the cross section of what this front panel looks like, there's actually a bender chamber inside that help direct the noise in the longer path than just a traditional 90 degree bend. So the, so the sound wave need to travel a much longer distance than that is typical of cases of this front panel design. Okay, and for airflow, here you can see we have slanted side vents on both sides of the case with calculated uh, surface area that allows sufficient amount of air to flow in to the case through this opening where the fan can actually suck air from. So the case would actually have reasonably good cooling performance while keeping the noise way down compared to other cases on the market. Okay, so that's the SETA Q1 configuration. But if you're the type that likes lots of airflow, using the same internal chassis, we also have a second version called the SETA H1. So the H stands for high airflow. So I'll sh let, let you see what that looks like. Okay, here you go. So not only does the H1 have full mesh front on the grill, on the front panel, it has that really nice looking ARGB lighting effect on the front panel to make it look a little bit more like a gaming PC than people are used to nowadays. And not only that, the case interior is what you expect of a mainstream enthusiast case layout. So PSU shroud, lots of room for graphics car and a CPU cooler, as well as these drive cages where you can swap, be more modular to make it more expandable with hard drive storage. Okay, so these are all being considered right now for future release. Okay, so that's the SETA H1 and Q1. Let's move on to another tower case. So this is the Farah V1. So if you look at the front panel, you'll see where we get the inspiration for calling this the V1, right? You have this V-shaped adjustable RGB lighting strip that runs from the top all the way down to where this ARGB fan is located, which will include the case. Okay, so it looks really nice. And on the side, it comes standard with tempered glass side panel, also nice long PSU shroud, as well as plenty of room for all the components that you need in a micro ATX case, okay? And on the top, USB ports, three of them. All right, so that's the Fara V1, okay? Continue on. Here we have the LD03AF. So this is an updated version of the case that we released last year in the LD03 original. So right away, one of the biggest change that you'll see with this case is the addition of this cutout on the tempered glass. It's actually very difficult to do. Um, this has a vent and also a filter on it for the GPU area. So um, according to our own testing, it can improve GPU temperature by as much as 10 degrees Celsius. So it's really a worthy addition. Um, 
addition uh, to this case if you're looking to air cool your graphics car instead of using liquid cooling. Another change that we made to this case is also a, a replacement of the bottom intake fan into an air penetrator fan. And on top of the case, one of the US USB ports has been converted into a type C port. So that's the third change that we made to this case. Okay, so the, this case is already available now. So yeah, look forward to seeing some of you build into this. Okay, so move on to another mini ITX case. Actually two of them. So here with me are the Sugo 14 and the Sugo 15. Okay, the model number abbreviated as for some of you familiar with Silverstone's small phone factor, the SG14 and the SG15. Okay, so both of these cases uh, share the same internal structure. Their main difference is their exterior outlook. So on the Sugo 14, here we have a plastic front panel that looks really nice, whether you have it in this orientation or this orientation. And also, for those of you who don't know, uh, this styling line here actually reveals a hidden five and a quarter inch drive bay. Okay, so as an option, you can actually still use an optical drive if you like. And we designed the front panel so that when you don't need an optical drive, you can cover this up and be unnoticeable to most people. Okay, and moving to the SG15's exterior, you can see that it consists of aluminum front panel and also the top, side, and bottom are all aluminum panels. Okay, this is versus the plastic panel and the steel panel of the Sugo 14. Another difference between the two cases is the front I.O. port design. So the Sugo 14 has three USB ports, two of them being 3.0, one is 2.0. On the Sugo 15, there's two 3.0 ports and a Type-C port. And on the back of the case, on the more premium SG4, Sugo 15, you have capped thumb screws made of uh, larger aluminum while the steel one is present on the Sugo 14. Okay, let's uh, roll the video for what the case looks like when you open up the side covers and top covers. So here you can see on the left side, there's room for two 120 millimeter fan or a 120, 240 millimeter radiator. And on the bottom side, the power supply goes in this way. So all the cables on the power supply will be out of the way from other components. And on the right side, that's where you can install graphics card. Up to triple slot graphics card can be fitted inside the Sugo 14, okay? So it's a really impressive case uh, in terms of the amount of power you can pack in inside this, you know, sub 20 liter case, all right? So that's the new Sugo series. And moving on to another mini ITX case, here we have the Milo, or the Milo 10, or ML10 with the uh, product number. So this is also a mini ITX case, but much, much smaller, as small as 2.8 liters in size. Okay, uh, the reason we can make this so small is because it doesn't contain room for standard size power supply. It doesn't have expansion slots, but that's not the point of this case. The point of this case is to be as small as possible for fitting a standard size mini ITX case. So another thing that we're also making this uh, very different from other cases of the same type is that for the first retail model, we'll actually include two different size of front panel. So here we have the elevated uh, front panel plus the top cover, and we'll also include a standard sized or lower front panel with the accordingly uh, smaller top cover or shorter top cover, okay? So what can this do for you? Well, in the video, I'll show you in a different montage showing you how with the standards height and also the elevated height of different CPU coolers that you can fit inside. So Intel and AMD retail stock cooler can be fitted if you have the elevator cover. While if you use the super low profile coolers, you can use the smaller, smaller uh, standard size. Okay, so the case can grow from 
2.8 liters up to 3.7 liters. We will also include VESA mount, so you can easily mount this case behind a monitor. So it fits optical drive, various configuration of 2.5 inch drives, and also even a top mounted fan if you like. So it's a very versatile case. And to power everything inside the case, if your motherboard does not already have a DC power on board, uh, you will need to get one of these uh, DC board. They come in 60 watt or 120 watt versions. Okay, so these will be fitted inside the case where you can connect them via AC adapter on the outside to give you the power that is required to run the system. Okay, so that's the Milo 10. And moving on, we have another chassis, but this time in the opposite direction in the server uh, space. So this is a 4U, standard 4U size server chassis. It looks quite ordinary at first, but if you look closely, the front has a half Silverstone logo venting design. And if I open this up, you'll reveal two five and a quarter inch drive bay over here, plus what looks like fan mounting up here. So if we open the top cover, in the video we'll show, uh, pre-shot will show you that you can actually fit two 120 millimeter fans or even a 240 millimeter radiator to the front of the case, okay? And for graphics card, we have graphic card supporter to help hold the graphics card down while in transport or when you're moving about. Also, another thing I'd like to point out is that on the front panel, this case actually has USB Type-C port on the front. So this is something that you do not see normally uh, with 4U server chassis right now. Okay, so liquid cooling, USB Type-C, you can actually build yourself, you know, even a gaming PC out of this even. So that's why we will also include a vertical stand with this case, so you can actually set this uh, case up to look like this. Okay, it's really neat. So this is the RM42502. Okay, and to my right side, we have a server rack to show you more cases. So over here, we have the RM22308. So there's eight hot swappable drive bay on the front, two toolless 2.5 drive space, three hot swappable fan, capable of 1U redundant or 2U power supply mounting. Motherboard can fit up to SSI EEB dual CPU type motherboards, as well as a slim optical drive. The SAS backplane that we include in this case is 12G capable. So you can also pair this case up with our Silverstone's own server, uh, 2U server coolers, as well as our SAS car and SAS cables. And if the storage for this is still not enough, we also make a version that has 12 drive base. So this is the RM22312. Okay, so the interior is very similar to the one on top. It's still a 2U case, but the top has been added with four more hot swappable drive space, okay? And lastly, for the server chassis, we have the RM23502. This is a rather simpler case for those of you that don't need all of those uh, hot, swappable, hot swappable bays. This case offers you two five and a quarter inch drive bay, six three and a half inch drive space, compatibility with the ATX power supply and ATX motherboards, okay? And the quality of the case is still very, very good, very solid, okay? So in addition, in addition to coolers, uh, SAS cards, cables, we also have these uh, rail sliding kit to go along with our server chassis, okay? So these are, we, we are ready, we'll make you ready for the upcoming server, server rush as uh, we, we are about to see. So that's the chassis part of the Expo. Let's move on to the power supply next and I'll give you a preview of the SX1000.
Okay, so that's the preview of, of our SX1000. So this is a SFXL sized power supply with 1000 watt of power. Okay, by the time this release later this year, this should be the most powerful SFX class uh, unit ever released onto the market. And next to the SX1000, here we have the SX750. So again, you can see this is a standard size SFX compared to the SFXL. It's 750 watt, and as well, when this is released, it will be one of the most powerful units on, on sale also. So those are the two new SFX coming later this year. And moving on to the right, my right side, we have two new power supply under the name Decathlon. So we're bringing back this name after almost a decade. So with the first model that will be launching within this series will be the DA1650. So yeah, you read that right. It's a 1,650 watt power supply. The most powerful uh, we've ever released until this point. And you'll notice that the power supply itself doesn't look very large, right? So if I didn't tell you that this is a 1650 watt power supply, you might think this is just an 850 watt. And similarly, the DA50 next to it looks like a 500 watt power supply, but it's indeed an 850 watt unit. So again, our uh, downsizing has been implemented even on these new higher end power supplies, the decathlons. Okay, moving on. Here we have the ET500 ARGB. So we're doing things a little bit differently uh, compared to some other brands where they put ARGB lighting or fans into their more premium models. So we decided to sort of change that up and add the fan, like RGB fan, to our entry level model. So this should be something that's interesting uh, for you to sell, okay? Next, we have <coughs> an NJ700. So this is our Niger bandless power supply series. So right now we're upping the wattage to 700 watts. Okay, so this is quite impressive for fanless unit. Okay, moving on. Here we have a new TFX power supply. This is called a TX700. So yes, that's 700 watt of power inside a TFX chassis. So by the time this releases uh, late, later this year, it should be the most powerful model you can buy on the market. And similarly here, we have a new FX500. So this is a Flex ATX 500 watt power supply. Again, probably the most powerful model you can buy for this form factor when it comes out. Okay, so let's move on to look at some of our entry level model. Um, on the bottom row. So here we have the ET700, 600 and 650 in modular or fixed cable configurations. So with Intel's new Comet Lake CPU just being announced, uh, lots of motherboards supporting that CPU require now two EPS connectors. So likewise, we will implement two EPS connectors into our entry level power supplies, whereas uh, dual EPS connector features usually reserved for higher wattage or premium models before. We'll slowly be making the change where all of our power supply will be able to support uh, the new dual e EPS configuration. Okay, so that's the power supply section of our expo. Let's move on to the CPU coolers. So after the successful launch of our permafrost all-in-one liquid cooler last year, we're following up with brand new series of liquid coolers again called the Ice Gym. Okay, these Ice Gym models will not replace the permafrost. They will be actually one level higher than the permafrost. So in the, initially it will be launching three different sizes of Ice Gym. So the first model will be the IG, 240p, P stands for plus or pro, meaning that is a extra thick radiator design. Second model will be the IG280, so this is a 280 millimeter version, and then IG360, okay? 
So what makes these more high-end is the ability to support larger CPUs such as AMD's Threadripper or TR4 CPUs, as well as Intel's Xeon, larger LGA3647 socketed GPU. So if you take a closer look here, let's compare the size of the water block from the permafrost to the ice gym, okay? There's a massive difference in size of their water block. And you can also see the copper plate size differences. So this will very well support uh, the larger CPUs. But what we're also doing differently is that we're going to make the ice gym also compatible with smaller CPUs, such as the recently announced LGA1200 or the older LGA 115X models from Intel and also AMD's AM4 from AMD, okay? So let's look at how the ice gym look when the ARGB light lights up, okay? So we have this diamond cut-like top cover to really uh, bling up uh, the ice gym as name suggests, it's a gym, gym-like effect. Okay, so really pretty. So that's the new uh, all-in-one liquid cooler ice gym series model. So moving on to air cooling. So we're sort of going a little bit in opposite direction as our liquid cooling with the introduction of these uh, lower cost entry-level air coolers. So this one is the AR12 RGB. It comes with a Nice looking RGB fan with four heat pipes. Okay, so the cooling is actually pretty good for the price that we are offering. And below that is a smaller cooler called a KR03. It has just two heat pipes, but it, because it's a larger 92 millimeter tower design, it will cool um, better than Intel or AMD's lower level stock coolers. So this is a really good option for maybe a lower cost micro ATX build, while this is for larger ATX cases. Okay, so those are the coolers that we have coming. Lastly, let's move on to our accessories. So over here, we have just launched these product in the middle row here. I'll show you here in detail. So this is the ECU02-E. So for those of you who just bought a new case with those nice USB Type-C port. But if you still have an older model that maybe doesn't have the key A connector, well, this is your solution here. You can get one of these cards to plug into your PCI Express port to enable the connection to your Type-C port on the case. Okay, next. Here's the ECM21-E. So this is a M.2 MVAE adapter card to PCI Express slot. But what makes this completely different from any one uh, that you've seen on the market is that it's toolless, okay? So there's no tiny screws to mess around with. All you have to do to remove the SSD is to pull on this clip, then off comes the SSD. And to put it back, it's just as easy and quick. After you slide in the slot, press, and that locks in place, just like that, in seconds. Okay, so that's really nice. Next, we have another M.2 adapter card called the ECM24. So this one comes with a beefy aluminum heatsink on top to help cool your M.2 SSD. And now it has ARGB lighting also. Okay, that's pretty cool. Next product is our PI02. So this is our Raspberry Pi case designed to be fanless. So it's got two heatsink column to help conduct the heat from the processor or chips up to this thick aluminum case like this, okay? Okay, moving on. Here we have two sets of power supply cable, the PP13 and also the PP12. So these are designed to let you add additional EPS connector uh, to the power supply that you may not otherwise have. So you don't need to get our Silverstone's new power supplies 
to get the dual EPS connection that you need. So they either connect your PCI Express, two of them, into one EPS, or convert one EPS to two EPS connector. Okay, so that's their functions. So this is really nice for current Silverstone power supply users. Next product, we have the ES03 Wi-Fi. So for those of you that know, we've launched already a remote starter for PC, but those always come with a physical remote. But with this Wi-Fi model, you can easily uh, download an app and turn on and off your PC via your smartphone instead, okay? Moving over here, we have two prototypes. These are still rough prototypes, so they don't look like the finished version, but let's talk, up, talk about them anyways. These are Type-C port device. So you can see this adapter card will give you the USB 3.2 Gem 2x2, 20 gigabit speed with this. And to work with that, we have an M.2 MVAE external enclosure that will work at the same speed. Okay, so these two will be launched pretty much at the same time. Next, we have here a M.2 thermal pad or a thermal heat sink with ARGB included. Okay. All right. Over here, um, it's been a while since we have a slim optical slot loading drive, but here it is, SOV03. It took, a, took us a while to find a batch of these to sell, so for those of you uh, small phone factor users or even server users that require slot loading Blu-ray, uh, this is good news for you. We'll come with um, 9.5 millimeter or 12.7 millimeter drive bezels, okay, to fit different sizes. Next to that, we have the FS301. So this is a five and a quarter inch drive bay converter into a hot swappable 3.5 inch drive, okay? And lastly, here, we have another drive bay device. So this is an expansion car slot converter into a 2.5 inch drive bay, hot swap, okay? So there you go. All right, so that concludes uh, our online expo of new product, and I hope you like what you see. And if you have any feedbacks, please uh, let us know as well. We'll be happy to answer them and maybe even make improvements on our products. So thank you very much, and maybe I'll see you next year. <laughs>